Hello there and welcome to a new video about caustics in Blender. So I'm certainly not the first guy to make a video about this, but I am one of the first guys to show you how to improve them. So I think the standard version of Blender that it's been doing is really, really good, but it could be a lot better. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get around the standard Blender caustics, make them look in my opinion, a little bit better, and how to get around the limitations that are causing, uh, that are being caused by the standard version of Blender. So first up, how do you actually enable the Blender version? In case you've been living under a rock and never seen a video on caustics before, I'm going to quickly show you how to do it. So basically there is three steps, at least, that you should take in order to get caustics in Blender. So now you can see right here that you have these shadows that are actually looking pretty normal so in order to enable the caustics what you should do would be to go to your object that you want to cast caustics so in my case this is the glass here we're going to go to the object properties panel this is the orange one right here and we're going to enable cast shadow caustics so right off the bat nothing happened so now we need to go to our ground plane. By the way, I have enabled all of this for the other objects as well. Uh, this is just for showcasing. So now you want to get, go to the ground plane or the object that you want the caustics to be cast on and you should be able to select this here under the object properties panel under shading where it says receive shadow caustics. Make sure that you're using Blender version 3.2 or above in order for this to work. So right now you can see nothing changed still. So what do we need to do? If you're using an HDRI for your lighting, what you should do would be to go to the settings and enable shadow caustics here, but as you can see, mine is turned off right now. Or if you have been using a light all the time, you should go to your light, uh, go to the light settings or object data properties for the light. And here you can see a setting which is called shadow caustics, turn that on and right off the bat, you can see some results. So it takes a huge amount of time to render. As you can see, we're still at one sample. Maybe if I restart the render, no, it actually works right now. Um, you can see it actually works, sort of. It gives you caustics, but they are very, very, very slow. Um, they are pretty detailed, not gonna lie, but they could be a lot better, in my opinion. Because as of right now, they don't support uh, any sort of uh, volumetri um, volumetrics. So if you take a look right now, if I change the glass color here, it actually works. So I make it blue and it works, but you can see this is still black, right? This is not blue in any way, shape or form. And also this is not the way you want to color glass. For everybody that has been following my tutorials recently about glass, you would know that you want to color this with a volume absorption node. So if we put that in here, plug it in and make this blue now, I'm going to change the value to one and this is like 5000 so you can see it is really blue, but it doesn't actually change anything. If at all, it changes the black portion so you can see a little bit of blue sparkling through, but it doesn't really work, which is a major drawback because this is actually really, really blue and the shadow is white. So how do we get around this? Well, with this method, you can't at least as of right now and also another thing that doesn't really work with this because it only calculates up to four caustic bounces uh, which means that you can only get like barely through a glass with this uh, is to have liquid inside your glass so let me just turn off this box here if i was to take something out of the glass just let me quickly by the way you don't have to do any of this this is just for explanation purposes if i was to copy this make it a separate object and fill the caps and set it twice so we get a nice object have i inverted the normals yet yes i have and this is facing the wrong direction which is also not pretty good uh let me see let me see let me see face orientation by the way you don't need to worry about any of this it's just me doing stuff so now unhide everything now you can see we still have this glass here right and the, sh uh, the shadow caustic is being co uh, cast by the object but only at the parts that don't have water in it 
So as you can see, they're being cast over here and here basically nothing changed with the other two glasses and this here, but the major drawback is once you have a liquid inside, it will not cast any caustics anymore because it will bump up the bounces to six. So nothing will be cast because it only can cast up to four caustic bounces. So as I said, this is a major limitation, right? So you cannot have a glass with caustics in it uh, if it has any sort of liquid in it. So how do we get around this? Basically, I have made a node setup, which enables you to actually do this faster. So basically less render time and you get to have the liquid inside of it without any, uh, without any hindrance. Did I just delete this? Yes, I did. Should have just hidden it like this. So now how do we do that? I have made an example here, uh, dispersion glass. This is just my old dispersion glass shader, which I modified a little bit to have the caustics. This is the entire node setup that you would need to have in order for it to work. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It looks like this. It doesn't look one to one like the version of Blender, but the version of Blender is not actually uh, entirely accurate itself. So you can see you get the uh, the same thing happening over here. So it does take into account the geometry and everything. You can see the details in it. You can see the ridges in it here uh, that are happening. You can see the tiling of it because it has like these, uh, these tilings going from top to bottom. Let me just quickly enable this for the rest of the objects as well. Whoopsies, like this. Link materials. And now you can see everything has the same caustics. So it actually renders a little bit faster. Not much, but a little bit. And also what you would need to do in order to the, uh, for you to have the most accurate result is to go under your, uh, what is it called? The render properties uh, tab. You should disable refractive caustics and you can also turn off your caustics in the light so now you can see it renders a lot faster once you turn that off and you still get the same result like it renders a lot faster than before and you still get the same so now i'm going to show you how to set it up i'm just going to not use this dispersion glass shader because you can take a look at uh, what it looks like now or you can just follow the tutorial i'm going to link in the description it explains you for you step by step how to get exactly this here so now, let me show you how to do it. So, AA glass, you're starting fresh. So first, you're going to take your glass BSDF or any sort of shader that you have for your glass. And then what you want to do would be to get a layer weight node, layer weight. Now, let me show you what it does. Basically, we're going to take the facing input or output, put it to 0.4. And that basically divides it so that we get like uh, proportional values or taking into account the shape of the glass so you can see right here it's a little bit darker right here it's like it's like the fresnel node but sort of a little bit different but has like a similar a similar thing similar approach to things you can see it's like it's not a completely inverted uh, fresnel node but it's close so basically we're going to take that uh what we're going to do now would be to add in a color ramp color ramp and now we're going to invert the white and the black portion. As I said, this is not a completely inverted Fresnel node. You can see it differs uh, quite a bit once we invert it, so it's not the same. So now what do we need to do? Now we would need to actually combine these. So we're going to take a mix shader, mix shader, plug it in here. We're going to view this here, and we're going to plug the glass BSDF on top. Now what we need to do would be to have a light path node. We're going to take the is shadow ray and plug it into the factor. So basically what does this do? It says for the shadows, take this. For everything else, so the object, take this. So we have the glass PSDF for the object, for the shading of the object. And the bottom input is going to be used only for the shadow regions. So what do we need to do now? Because this still looks like a normal shadow right now. 
would be to take a math node so we can control the caustic later. Let me just move this to the side. I'm a little bit clumsy, haven't been using Blender in a while now. And now we want to take a transparent node, transparent BSDF, and basically plug it in here. And right off the bat, you can see we are getting our caustics, uh, or at least some form of it. You can see it still takes account into account the, uh, the shape of the object, but it's not fully there yet. So now what we want to do would be to get in two more nodes. So we're going to plug this one right here in the middle. And now we're going to fiddle around with this until we are satisfied. So basically you want this here to be maybe a little bit more here and have more whites in the middle towards here. You can change of course the values. And this is something that looks rather okay, I think. Now with this here you can change the intensity of the caustics. Uh, you can see right off the bat they are a little bit brighter than the, uh, than the standard ones because um, doesn't really swallow any light. So basically what the what the method from Blender does is it takes the normal shadows and just slaps the caustics on top of it, which isn't really fully accurate. So you would have a little bit more light coming through it. Um, so that is why this is, in my opinion, a little bit better. You can change the value to be like one or like 10 if you wanted to, but it doesn't really make much sense. And also you want to set it to multiply. So once you set it to multiply, it is a little bit brighter than the than the standard setting, as you can see, because it doesn't really swallow the light. And you can also change this to be like higher, uh, higher value. So since you're using multiply and not add, as I changed it before, you can see the dark portions kind of stay dark and the light portions get a little bit brighter. Now, I would really tell you to keep this at one, except for when you really, really want to have the caustic stand out by a lot, but if not, you can really change this up to 10 and you would still have some detail. So if I was to set this to 1, you can really crank the darks a little bit more. So that when you actually do decide to have a brighter value, you can have more contrast in it. As you can see, once I change the dark value, the outside just gets a little bit more, uh, more intense. And you can change the value in the middle here, the darker one. Whoops. You can change this here in the middle to get some more detail in the middle here. But I would say you try this out for yourself, see what sticks, what doesn't. And now what I promised you would be to have a liquid in it, right? So let me unhide that. As you can see, we have a liquid in it and it still works. You can take the liquid and give it the same material. It already has the same material. That is great. So it still works, as you can see. We still have that caustic, which is drawn nicely. And everything just works, which is really nice. So I would suggest not keeping this that low. But here you have some nice looking caustics. They do work. Once we let this render to 12, you can see we have some light here being drawn from the, uh, from the liquid in the inside. So it really does work. So now what I promised you would be to have this being colored by a volume, right? So let's take our volume absorption node. We plug it into the volume, give it some, whoops, see what have I done here? Give it some coloration, like for instance, blue, set it to like 10. You can see it gets darker uh, and more bluish. Let's set this to something more noticeable, like red, give it like 500. And here you can see it's really, really red. And maybe we shouldn't really have the liquid in it so bright or have the same uh, same coloration. So I'm just going to take this, make it a separate material without that. And now you can see once we take away the coloration from the liquid inside of it, uh, the whole glass just or the whole caustic just gets red which is really nice you can also have this like 
be a lot brighter just from the liquid. We can have like some glowing liquid inside of it, but it doesn't really make sense. Uh, or you can just bump up the caustics from the glass. As I said, this isn't really realistic if you just bump up the caustic from the glass. Uh, I would suggest keeping it at one, but this is basically the general idea of it. And uh, yeah, if you want to see how you can have like dispersion glass, which is basically this effect where, let me just turn on my HDRI. Takes a little while. Uh, let me just bump up the dispersion. Uh, where can we take a better look at it? Here. Uh, if you want to see how you can get like dispersion glass, uh, where you can have like these light waves being cast or uh, being uh, separated by the glass in it, uh, you can check out my last glass tutorial. I'm, as I said, I'm going to link it down in the description below. You can get these fancy lights here. And also what my version allows you to do would be what the standard one doesn't allow you to do would be to use the, uh, the normal of the glass. So let me just take a normal map. Almost forgot. Just gonna take this back. And oopsie. So it uh, does allow you to use the normal. So I'm going to plug it in here and going to plug it in here and get a noise texture. Plug the color into the color. And as you can see, it adds those squiggly lines in here as well. So that is one uh, major drawback from the original version as well, which is being kind of fixed with this method. So I really hope you liked this and uh, you enjoyed this, you can learn something from it. This is really, I think, the most easy way to make good looking caustics. And uh, if you liked it, leave a comment down below. Maybe you could make some suggestions, uh, suggestions what you want to see next. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.